Ever feel like you're stuck in a financial rut, constantly spinning your wheels but never getting ahead? Well, today's your lucky day because we're diving headfirst into Breaking the Bank, How to Rise Above the Middle Class Money Mold. Curious to know how you can break free from those pesky financial limitations holding you back? Stick around as we uncover the secrets to financial freedom, from smashing limiting beliefs to embracing entrepreneurship and everything in between. So, are you ready to level up your money game? If you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck and ready to take control of your financial future, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. First, let's talk about limiting beliefs. You know, those pesky thoughts that whisper in our ears, you're not good enough, or you'll never make it big. Sound familiar? Well, guess what? We all have them. It's like having a little gremlin sitting on your shoulder, constantly naysaying your dreams. But here's the thing. These beliefs aren't set in stone. They're more like clouds passing through the sky. They come and go, but they don't define who we are or what we're capable of. Think about it like this. Imagine you're driving a car and your limiting beliefs are like potholes in the road. Sure, they might slow you down a bit, but with a little maneuvering, you can navigate around them and keep moving forward. But here's the kicker. Sometimes we don't even realize these beliefs are holding us back. It's like wearing tinted glasses. Everything looks a little darker and we don't even realize it until we take them off. So how do we identify these sneaky little buggers? Well, it starts with awareness. Pay attention to those little voices in your head. When you catch yourself thinking, I can't do that, or I'm not good enough, hit the pause button and ask yourself, is this really true, or am I just holding myself back? It's like shining a spotlight into the dark corners of your mind and exposing those beliefs for what they really are, just thoughts, not truths. And once you shine that light, you'll be amazed at how quickly those beliefs start to lose their power over you. So the next time you catch yourself doubting your abilities or questioning your worth, remember, you hold the power to rewrite the script of your life. Don't let those limiting beliefs hold you back from chasing your dreams and reaching for the stars. All right, guys, let's dive into the nitty gritty of building financial awareness. Now imagine your finances are like a big puzzle and every piece counts. But here's the thing, if you don't know where those pieces fit, you're going to end up with a jumbled mess. So where do we start? Well, it's all about getting down to the basics. Think of budgeting as your financial GPS. It's like having a roadmap that shows you where your money is coming from and where it's going. By keeping track of your income and expenses, you'll have a much clearer picture of your financial landscape. Next up, let's talk about saving. Now, I know it's not the most thrilling topic, but trust me, it's crucial. Saving is like planting seeds for your future. Whether it's for emergencies, big purchases, or retirement, having a savings cushion can make all the difference when life throws you a curveball. Now, on to investing. Don't worry. You don't need to be a Wall Street whiz to dip your toes into the world of investing. It's like planting a money tree and watching it grow over time. By putting your money to work in stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, you're giving it the opportunity to grow and multiply. And let's not forget about debt management. It's like playing a game of financial Jenga. You want to carefully remove those blocks of debt without toppling the tower. By tackling high interest debt first and making consistent payments, you'll chip away at it bit by bit until you're debt free. Next, let's touch on the importance of financial education. Think of it as sharpening your financial toolkit. The more you know about money management, investing, and building wealth, the better equipped you'll be to navigate the twists and turns of your financial journey. So it's all about budgeting like a boss, saving for a rainy day, investing wisely, managing debt like a pro, and never stop learning. Now let's talk about mindful spending habits. Now, imagine your finances as a garden and your money as the seeds you plant. You want to nurture those seeds carefully making sure they grow into strong, healthy plants. Mindful spending is like being a diligent gardener, carefully tending to each plant to ensure they flourish. So what exactly is mindful spending? Well, think of it as being conscious and intentional about where your money goes. It's about making deliberate choices with your spending rather than mindlessly swiping your card. 
just like a sculptor carefully molds clay into a masterpiece. Mindful spending molds your finances into a work of art. Now, let's bring it back to Breaking the Bank, How to Rise Above the Middle Class Money Mold. Mindful spending is a key ingredient in breaking free from financial constraints. It's about prioritizing your spending based on your values and goals. Just like a skilled architect designs a blueprint for a building, mindful spenders design a blueprint for their financial future. So how can you practice mindful spending? Start by identifying your needs versus wants. It's like separating the wheat from the chaff, focusing on what truly matters. Then create a budget that aligns with your priorities. Budgeting is like creating a roadmap for your finances, guiding you towards your goals. Next, track your spending and analyze where your money is going. It's like conducting a financial audit, identifying areas where you can cut back or reallocate funds. Remember, every dollar you save is like a brick you can use to build your financial fortress. But mindful spending isn't just about cutting back. It's also about spending consciously on things that bring you joy and fulfillment. It's like investing in high-quality materials to build a sturdy house that will last a lifetime. By aligning your spending with your values, you'll find greater satisfaction and purpose in your financial journey. So let's recap. Mindful spending is like tending to a garden, carefully nurturing your finances to ensure they grow and thrive. It's about being intentional with your spending, prioritizing your values, and building a solid foundation for your financial future. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more topics like this, comment the word more so I know. All right, let's dive into the world of entrepreneurship. Now I know when we hear that word, we might envision fancy suits and big boardroom meetings, but entrepreneurship is so much more than that. It's about embracing your passion taking risks, and carving out your own path to success. You know, one of my favorite stories of entrepreneurial triumph is that of Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Group. Now, Richard didn't come from a wealthy background. In fact, he struggled with dyslexia in school, which made academics a real challenge. But instead of letting that hold him back, he turned his focus to entrepreneurship. In his late teens, Richard started his first business, a magazine called Student, which he ran out of a basement. It wasn't a huge success, but it laid the groundwork for what was to come. Soon after, he launched Virgin Records, signing bands like the Rolling Stones and catapulting himself into the music industry spotlight. But Richard didn't stop there. He went on to create Virgin Atlantic Airways, Virgin Mobile, and countless other ventures, each one pushing the boundaries of what was possible. What's truly inspiring about Richard's story is his willingness to take risks and his unwavering belief in himself, even when others doubted him. So why is entrepreneurship so important? Well, for starters, it offers freedom. Imagine being your own boss, calling the shots and charting your own course. It's like being the captain of your own ship, navigating uncharted waters and discovering new horizons. But it's not just about freedom. It's also about creativity and innovation. Entrepreneurs are the dreamers and the doers, the ones who see problems as opportunities and challenges as chances to shine. It's like having a blank canvas and painting your own masterpiece, one bold stroke at a time. And let's not forget about the potential for financial reward. While entrepreneurship certainly comes with its risks, it also offers the opportunity for unlimited earning potential. Just look at Richard Branson or other self-made millionaires who started with nothing but a dream and turned it into a reality. So, whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur or just someone with a passion for innovation, remember this, the world is your oyster and entrepreneurship is the key to unlocking its treasures. So go ahead, embrace your inner entrepreneur and let your dreams take flight. Now let's talk about investing in personal development. Now I know what you might be thinking. Investing? Isn't that all about money? Well, hold on to your hats because we're about to shake things up a bit. Imagine your brain is a muscle, and just like any muscle, it needs exercise to grow stronger. Investing in personal development is like hitting the mental gym. You're flexing those neurons, expanding your knowledge, and boosting your earning potential in the process. Now, when we talk about personal development, we're not just talking about hitting the books or attending seminars. Sure, those are great options, but personal development comes in many shapes and sizes. It could be learning a new language, mastering a musical instrument, or even taking up a hobby you've always been curious about. 
But why is personal development so important in our quest to break the middle-class money mold? Well, think of it this way. The more skills you have under your belt, the more valuable you become in the marketplace. And when you're valuable, people are willing to pay top dollar for your expertise. So how does this tie back to breaking the bank, how to rise above the middle-class money mold? Well, think of personal development as the secret sauce to financial success. It's the missing ingredient that takes your recipe from bland to grand. Whether you're looking to climb the corporate ladder, start your own business, or simply increase your earning potential, investing in personal development is the key to unlocking those doors of opportunity. So don't just sit there twiddling your thumbs. Get out there and start investing in yourself. Whether it's signing up for an online course, attending a workshop, or simply picking up a book, every little bit counts. Remember, the journey to financial freedom starts with a single step, and investing in personal development is the first leap towards breaking free from the middle-class money mold. So, what are you waiting for? Start investing in yourself today and watch as the doors of opportunity swing wide open. All right, let's dive into the ocean of income streams. Ever heard the phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, it applies perfectly here. Diversifying your income is like having multiple strings to your bow, ensuring you've got options no matter what. So, what exactly are income streams? Think of them as different ways money flows into your pocket. There are two main types, active and passive. Active income is the money you earn by trading your time and skills, like a regular job or freelance work. It's like planting seeds in your garden and tending to them every day to make sure they grow. On the other hand, passive income is the money that comes in even when you're not actively working. This can be from investments, rental properties, or royalties. It's like setting up a lemonade stand that keeps selling even while you're off playing with your friends. Now, why is diversifying important? Well, imagine if all your income came from one source, like a single tree bearing fruit. What happens if that tree gets hit by lightning or a disease? You'd be left with nothing. But if you have multiple trees bearing different fruits, you'll always have something to harvest no matter what. Plus, diversifying income streams can provide stability and security. If one stream dries up, you've still got others flowing strong. It's like having a safety net to catch you if you fall. So how do you diversify? Start by looking at your skills and interests. Can you turn any of them into a side hustle or freelance gig? Maybe you've got some savings you can invest in stocks or real estate. The key is to explore different opportunities and find what works best for you. Remember, diversifying income streams isn't about spreading yourself too thin. It's about building resilience and creating a financial ecosystem that can weather any storm. Now, let's talk about overcoming the fear of failure. Picture this, you're about to take a leap, maybe start your own business or invest in something new. But then, that nagging voice creeps in, whispering, what if you fail? It's like standing at the edge of a diving board, right? You look down, and suddenly the water seems a whole lot scarier than it did before. But here's the thing, fear is just a feeling. It's not a fact, and the only way to conquer it is to face it head on. Think about it like this, every successful person you admire has faced failure at some point. Michael Jordan missed more than 9,000 shots in his career, but he's still considered one of the greatest basketball players of all time. So why is that? Well, it's because they didn't let failure define them. Instead of seeing it as a roadblock, they saw it as a detour on the path to success. It's like taking a wrong turn on a road trip. Sure, it might delay your arrival, but it doesn't mean you'll never reach your destination. Now, I'm not saying failure is easy. It's not. It can be downright terrifying, but here's the secret. It's also incredibly liberating. Because once you realize that failure is just a part of the journey, you're free to take risks, try new things, and push yourself beyond your comfort zone. So how do you overcome the fear of failure? Well, for starters, you've got to reframe your mindset. Instead of seeing failure as the end of the road, see it as a stepping stone to success. Remember, every failure is just a lesson in disguise. Secondly, surround yourself with positivity. Hang out with people who lift you up, support your dreams, and remind you that failure is not the end of the world. It's just a bump in the road. And finally, take action. The best way to conquer fear is to face it head on. So go ahead, 
take that leap. Start that business. Invest in yourself. Because the only real failure is not trying at all. All right, let's dive into the magical world of mindset. Think of mindset like a pair of glasses you wear every day. Now imagine you have two options, a fixed mindset pair and a growth mindset pair. Meet Sam, our imaginary character. Sam is facing a big challenge at work, a project that seems impossible to tackle. Now, he has got two sets of glasses on the table, the fixed mindset glasses and the growth mindset glasses. Sam picks up the fixed mindset glasses and thinks, hmm, these look pretty cozy. With these on, I'd probably just give up on the project. After all, I've never been good at this stuff. But wait, before Sam puts those on, let's see what the growth mindset glasses have to offer. Sam picks up the growth mindset glasses. These look interesting. It says here that with these on, I could see this project as a chance to learn and grow. Even if I fail, I'll learn valuable lessons along the way. And just like that, Sam puts on the growth mindset glasses. Suddenly, the project doesn't seem so daunting anymore. He dives in, ready to tackle any obstacles that come their way. Now, let's break it down further. Imagine you're learning to ride a bike. With a fixed mindset, every fall feels like a failure and you might give up altogether. But with a growth mindset, you see each fall as a step closer to mastering the skill. You dust yourself off, hop back on and keep pedaling forward. So how can you cultivate this growth mindset in your own life? It's all about embracing challenges, learning from setbacks, and believing in your ability to improve. Think of it like flexing a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. Remember, life is like a roller coaster ride. There will be ups and downs, twists and turns, but with a growth mindset guiding you, you'll ride the waves of life with confidence and resilience. So grab those growth mindset glasses and see the world through a lens of possibility and growth. Who knows what amazing adventures await you on the other side. All right, now let's talk about setting smart financial goals. Now I know what you're thinking, smart? Like, are we talking about being intelligent with our money goals? Well, sort of, but smart actually stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Imagine you're planning a road trip. You wouldn't just hop in the car and start driving aimlessly, right? No way. You'd plot out your route, set your destinations, and decide how long you'll spend at each stop. That's exactly what setting smart financial goals is like. It's about having a clear roadmap to guide you towards your desired financial destination. So let's break down each letter of SMART, shall we? First up, specific. This means your goal should be crystal clear. Instead of saying, I want to save money, get specific. Say, I want to save $5,000 for a down payment on a house. Next, measurable. You need to be able to track your progress. Think of it like marking off checkpoints on your road trip. You want to know how far you've come and how much further you have to go. Then, achievable. Your goal should be challenging, but realistic. Don't set yourself up for failure by aiming too high. If you're earning $40,000 a year, setting a goal to save $100,000 in a year might be a bit of a stretch. Moving on to relevant. Your goal should align with your values and priorities. If owning a home isn't important to you right now, don't make it a goal just because everyone else is doing it. Make sure your goals are meaningful to you and time-bound. Every goal needs a deadline. Otherwise, it's just a dream. So give yourself a time frame to work towards, whether it's six months, a year, or five years. Having a deadline will keep you focused and motivated. Now, where does breaking the bank, how to rise above the middle class money mold, fit into all of this? Well, think of it as the theme song to your financial journey. Setting smart financial goals is your ticket to breaking free from the middle class money mold and reaching new heights of financial success. Now let's talk about the importance of building a supportive network. Going it alone is like trying to climb Mount Everest without a Sherpa. You need a team cheering you on and guiding you through the peaks and valleys of financial growth. Imagine you're on a road trip. You wouldn't hit the highway without a trusty GPS or a good old map, right? Well, think of your supportive network as your financial GPS. 
They're the ones who keep you on track when you veer off course and celebrate with you when you reach your destination. Now, who should be in your financial entourage? Think of them as your Avengers, each bringing their own superpowers to the table. You'll want mentors who've been there, done that, and can offer sage advice based on their own experiences. Peers who are on the same journey as you can provide empathy and camaraderie, making the climb less lonely. And don't forget about advisors who can offer professional guidance tailored to your specific goals and circumstances. But building a supportive network isn't just about surrounding yourself with cheerleaders, it's also about being a supportive teammate yourself. Just like in any good team, it's a two-way street. Offer your knowledge, expertise, and encouragement to others on their financial journey. Remember, the more you give, the more you receive in return. Now you might be thinking, but how do I find these financial allies? Well, it's easier than you think. Start by joining local or online communities centered around personal finance. Attend workshops, seminars, or networking events where you can meet like-minded individuals. And don't be afraid to reach out and connect with people who inspire you on social media or through professional networking platforms. And once you've found your dream team, nurture those relationships like you would a prize garden. Check in regularly, offer support when needed, and celebrate each other's victories, no matter how big or small. After all, success tastes sweeter when you've got a squad to share it with. So, building a supportive network is like building a bridge to your financial goals. Surround yourself with the right people, and you'll find that the journey is not only easier, but also a whole lot more enjoyable. All right, guys, here's the deal. Taking action and sticking with it is like trying to lose weight or learn a new skill. You got to put in the effort and keep at it even when things get tough. Think about it like this. If you plant a seed and then forget to water it, do you think it'll grow into a big, beautiful tree? Nope. It takes consistent care and attention. Nah. So when it comes to breaking free from that middle-class money mold, you've got to be willing to roll up your sleeves and get to work. It's not going to happen overnight, but with determination and persistence, you'll get there. Now, let's talk about taking action. It's all about making moves, big or small, towards your financial goals. Maybe it's setting up automatic savings transfers, starting that side hustle you've been thinking about, or finally tackling that mountain of debt. Whatever it is, the key is to take that first step and keep moving forward. But here's the thing. Life's going to throw some curveballs your way. You might hit a rough patch or face setbacks along the road to financial freedom. That's where persistence comes in. It's like playing a game of whack-a-mole. Every time a problem pops up, you gotta whack it down and keep on going. And hey, I get it. Staying motivated when things aren't going your way can be tough. That's why it's important to celebrate your wins no matter how small. Did you stick to your budget this week? Treat yourself to a little something special. Did you land a new client for your business? Give yourself a high five. By acknowledging your progress and staying positive, you'll find the strength to keep pushing forward. So. Taking action and persisting is like running a marathon. It's going to be a long journey with plenty of ups and downs, but as long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other, you'll eventually cross that finish line. Well, that wraps up today's episode of Breaking the Bank, How to Rise Above the Middle Class Money Mold. Remember, the journey to financial freedom is a marathon, not a sprint. So lace up those shoes and let's start running towards a brighter financial future together. Remember, the purpose of this video is to broaden your horizons in the realm of investing. It's not about handing you a ready-to-eat financial meal, but about teaching you how to cook one yourself. Investing comes with its share of risks and uncertainties, so it's crucial to wear your research hat and consult with qualified professionals before making any financial decisions. Keep in mind, past performance in investments is like last year's weather forecast. It doesn't necessarily predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Always weigh the risks and tread carefully when putting your hard-earned money at stake. If you found this video helpful, there's more where that came from. Now, if you want to know the 10 mistakes that make you a poor middle class and why no bank can save you, I recommend you watch this video next. Thank you for joining us today. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your engagement is like applause for our efforts and it motivates us to bring even more valuable content your way. So feel free to drop a comment below. I appreciate your support, and I see you in my next video.